31, let's go ahead and start in on section 3.3. We're going to look at rates of change and then some behavior of graphs. We're going to find the average rate of change of a function. And I hope that phrase sounds familiar, average rate of change. We're going to use a graph to determine whether a function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. We're going to use a graph to find local max and min. And then we're also going to use a graph to potentially find absolute maxes and absolute mins. And collectively, when you're talking about maximums and minimum points, you might hear the book or myself refer to these in general as extrema. All right, so when I say extrema, I'm including both the maxes and the mins. So we're going to find highs and lows of a graph. I mentioned before that in Math 31, since this is like pre-calculus, I know we call it college, college algebra, but you guys are heading on into calculus. The goal of pre-calc is for you to be able to graph any function and tell me some particular traits about those functions. Domains and ranges are pretty popular traits, and maxes and mins are also popular traits. So that's why we're looking at them in this section. And, and we'll look at them throughout the rest of the semester. All right, so when you hear rate of change, a rate of change describes how an output quantity changes relative to the change in an input quantity. So when you hear output quantity, right, here they're talking about y values, right, or function values, since we're on into Math 31 and we're not so much using y notation as function notation. When you hear input quantity, right, this is talking about x values. So this rate of change talks about the change in y in relativity to the change in x. So the units on a rate of change are output units per input units. And I want to stress this word per. Anytime you hear a per, especially when you're in a word problem, uh, they're talking about the slope, right? Because that's what a rate of change is. It's the slope. So when you hear something like miles per hour, right, that's a velocity, but that's a slope. So that per indicates that we have a fraction, and, and we do, we have fractions when we're talking about rates of change, when we're talking about slopes. We're comparing the change in y to the change in x. So the average rate of change between two input values is the total change of the function values, i.e. the output values, divided by the change in the input values. And you're used to this formula, all right? This, if I wanted to say this expression out loud, we would say delta y. Delta is a Greek letter, I believe it's capital D in the Greek alphabet, but we have delta y over delta x, right? Change in y over change in x. f of x sub 2 minus f of x sub 1 in ratio to x sub 2 minus x sub 1. I think you're more familiar with this it's, uh, formula for slope, right? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And, and that's fine and good, but like I said, we're, we're in pre-calc, right? We're in Math 31, we're trying to get to fancier notation, and in this class we're much more often going to use function notation than the y notation. So when you hear rate of change, all right, the thing that you want to hear or want to take away, when you hear average rate of change, I want you to think of slope, and specifically the slope between two points. Oops, you can't see what I'm writing down there. I just realized that's not in view. Let me scooch this up so that you can see it. Right, so when you hear me talk about average rate of change, it's the slope between two points. And I want to stress the two points only because when you're in pre-calc or Math 31, we will be looking at the slope between two points, right? If I was to graph this out, just do a quick little sketch, right? If we call this x1 and this x2 and we had a function and there was f of x of 1 and f of x of 2 here, and I wanted to get the slope between those two points, I would use the slope formula. So when you hear me talk about average rate of change, slope between two points, and as you progress, especially once you get into calculus, we're gonna look at the slope at one point, and we're gonna talk about the slope of a tangent line. Now we won't do that in here, we'll kind of allude to it. Um, this is sometimes referred to as the slope of a secant line, and they say secant because it has two points, that's what it's referring to. So in pre-calc, you look at slopes between two points, where in calculus, you look at slopes at exactly one point. 
All right, so we're gonna find the average rate of change of a function. I'm gonna scooch this up a little bit more just so I have room to work. All right, so let's take a look here. This says, use the data in the table below, or using the data in the table below, find the average rate of change of the price of gasoline between 2005 and 2010. Okay, so I hear average rate of change and my spidey senses go off and I say, well, you know what? I need the slope. And because it's the average rate of change, it's gonna be the slope between two points. And again, I know we're not in calc yet, but whenever it's the slope at one point, it's gonna be called instantaneous rate of change. All right, so they gave me some starting values. You can see here, um, that it looks like they're actually calling the input value y and the output value c. So, all right, we're not using x and y that, like you might be used to, or x and f of x. We're using y and f of c. And as we start to progress through this class, especially when we get into the statistics side of things, I'm not always going to have x against y. And you'll have to get comfortable with using whatever letters are provided. So we'll, we'll take care of that. Um, and it wants the average rate of change it's giving me between the year 2005 and 2010, and I'd like the average rate of change of the price of gas. So I'm gonna assume these numbers down here are the price of gas in those given years. So they asked me to go between 2005 and 2010. So those are actually the only four numbers I'm going to need. They gave me all these other um, values for the different years in terms of price of gas. And you could find the average rate of change between any of these two years. I'm, I'm gonna use 2005 and 2010 because that's what was specified. So I would like the change in the cost in ratio to the change in the year. All right, so that's why I gave you C and Y. C for cost of gas, Y for year. But it's analogous to X and F of X but I am gonna start messing with the letters so we can get beyond always needing to use X and F of X. All right, so if I was going to play this out, this should technically be C at 2005. Oops, let me go to the later year. What was the cost in 2010 minus the cost in 2005 in ratio to 2010 minus 2005? Right, the change in the cost in ratio to the change in the year, the change in the outputs in ratio to the change in the inputs. So let's see, what was the cost in 2010? It looks like it was $2.84 a gallon. And in 2005, it was $2.31 a gallon. And then 2005 minus, or excuse me, 2010 minus 2005 is five. So as I'm looking at this, the, this difference, if I plug it in on my calculator, actually I'm gonna do that one in my head, I can do that in my head, that's 53 cents over five years. And if I wanna write this as a unit ratio or just as a decimal, let's see what we have here. Let me clear this out, 0.53 divided by five. It looks like we have 0.106. All right, so that's, that's all fine and good. But I want us to think about the units on this. What are the units on this? Now, in order to talk about the units, I am gonna write this as a unit ratio. You don't have to, but just go with me for a moment. If I wrote this as a unit ratio, it would be 0 0.106 over one. And sometimes it's helpful to just think about the units involved here. So I'm gonna put another little fraction bar. What were the units on my numerator? Well, you can see here, this is money, right? So this is 0.106, this is dollars, yeah? And then the units down here, this was five what? Was this five friends, five apples, five pencils? No, this was five years, right? So what this is saying is that gas increased between 2005 and 2010, and you can see it went from 231 to 284. So what did it do? It went up an average of $0.106 per year. And you hear me saying the word per. All right, so it went up an average of about 11 cents per year. So I'm just going to say this is approximately 11 cents per year. All right, so this isn't saying that gas went up exactly 11 cents every single year. And you can see that wasn't the case, right? This was an increase of 32 cents. 
then about 22 cents, then it took a big leap, then it took a big dive, right? So it was heading up and down. It was fluctuating between those years, but on average, it increased about 11 cents per year. So I'm gonna just scoot this up and I wanna practice writing this as a sentence because especially when we get into the statistics side of this class, we're gonna be writing out a bunch of sentences. So I would say gas has increased by an average, and I'm gonna underline that, right? This was the average rate of change by an average of 11 cents per, right? There's that, that per word when we're talking about slopes, per year between 2005 and 2010. So that's all I got, right? That's my slope. And we will be interpreting slopes as we move forward, especially when we get to chapter four. So gas has increased by about 11 cents per year. Okay, great. Or excuse me, by an average of 11 cents per year. So we're gonna move on to the next page. We're gonna take a look at slopes when I give you not so much a table of data like I did in example one, but I'm going to give you a graph. So we always wanna try the numerical side of things, the graphical side of things, and then we'll get to the analytical side of things. So here was the numerical side, some data. Example two will be the graphical side, some graphs. And examples three and four, I'll actually give you some functions to plug into. All right, I'll see you in a few, gang. Bye.